All right, so the last thing that we did was we created a um, an actual post, and we saw its result, and we saw that they had a lot of nuances. Continuing on the concept of posts, hover over your posts section, and look at that, categories and tags. Click on categories, and this will list all of the categories you've created. So if you misspelled them, if you no longer want them, you can edit them here. And what's useful to see here is also how many of a particular post is in a category. You'll see count. So once you've got categories built, you will see then the count of articles, the count of posts. And when you click there, it'll show you all posts of that category. Now, let's say we did it the way that I was saying, where first we'll create some categories and then some posts rather than backwards. Both ways will work, but let's see the differences by doing it this way first. Make sure that you're under the, the dashboard, and we'll go back to Posts, Categories. And simply here you have Name the category. The name is how it appears on your site. This will be visible to people. And then you've got Slug. The Slug is the URL-friendly version of the name. It is usually all lowercase and contains only letters, numbers, and hyphens or dashes. You really don't need to worry about filling this in because it'll do it for you. When you write in a name up here and you save it, it'll write the same thing from here into here, lowercase with dashes. So let's say I wanted to create a new recipe, a new uh, category here. We, we're talking healthy recipes. Um, let's say we're going to have a variety of articles about how we offer some, you know, um, uh, vegan-friendly alternatives. So let's say that would be a good name of a, of a category right there. So up here under name, we'll type vegan-friendly, which I believe is hyphenated, vegan-friendly alternatives. So I'll type it like a regular word, regular sentence. It will then automatically, after I save it, take this and write it here, lowercase, and put dashes in between each word. So don't worry yourself about writing the slug. It'll do it for you 99% of the time. There's parent. And notice after you start to create categories, they will then be selectable here. So if I had a blog about music and I was going to um, write an article about uh, heavy metal, then I might further specify in there, you know, thrash metal, death metal, corpse grinder metal, so forth. So all the, all, the, all the good ones. All the good ones. And so I don't need to do ca uh, parent in this case, but notice here, that's what it's saying. You might have a jazz category and under there have subcategories of bebop and big band in its option. So usually I don't deal too much with child categories. The big idea is you should categorize. No matter how you do it, you should ca categorize. It's SEO friendly. Description is not prominent by default, however, some themes may use it. So depending on your theme, whatever you write here might show up on screen, and it might be found by the search engines, which, which helps you. The more content that you create, the search engines can find and rank you. So oftentimes when we deal with WordPress and we're dealing with a brand new theme or a plugin or whatever, we don't know exactly how it works, and I know that myself when I do this for a client, Usually, I don't know how it all fully works sometimes, so I try it. I, I do something, I check the result, I then figure out how it works, and then I can use it or not. And what I mean here is I don't know if my theme is going to show this description by default. It may or may not. I don't know. It's not too much of a trouble for me to write something, add it and use it and see what happens. And if it doesn't do what I want, I can delete it or edit it. But let's just say for vegan-friendly alternatives. I did want to write a simple sentence about what uh, this category is. So we can say best choices for a uh, vegan-friendly for vegan-friendly fare. Whatever sentence defines that category thinking about in terms of keywords and all of that. 
SEO. Just go ahead and click Add New Category. Now there's a new category, zero count, and notice the slug wrote itself. Vegan dash, friendly dash, alternatives, lowercase. Healthy recipes became healthy dash recipes. Let's say I misspelled vegan. Well, I want to edit any of these. It's not obvious in WordPress many times, but when you hover over something, oftentimes you get the editing ability. Put your mouse over any of the categories there, and it should pop up Edit, Quick Edit, Delete, or View. The quick Edit will let you change the name and the slug quickly, but if you wanted to change the description, you do have to go to the full edit. Clicking View is the same as clicking on the number on the count to see how many of that exist, how many articles with that one exist. So if I did want to change the uh, description, I would have to click Edit. It will give me the full screen here, as before. I recommend, because I said, don't use uncategorized. You might say, great, I'll just delete it, because you notice there are delete, delete that healthy, delete vegan here, but there's no delete under uncategorized. The uncategorized category is, seems to be protected, you can't delete it. Here's the next best thing. Instead of being a beginner and accidentally leaving uncategorized turned on, what about editing it to give it a more meaningful name? And therefore, it will, by default, always have a meaningful category, not this meaningless, uncategorized one. This is up to you to decide what this could be. Let's say I'm often writing articles about, you know, tutorials. Maybe not all the time, but I often have an idea for a tutorial or a recipe in this case. So I could change this to be name of um, I don't know, great recipes and notice I did not change the slug. I left it alone and it did change. Just to show that again, I'm going to write whatever for the name and I will update it. And if I double check here, slug. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Vegan friendly. Oops. Vegan friendly alternatives. They alphabetized and they, it threw me off. Um, no, I guess it didn't. It's still uncategorized. Okay. Never mind. So, yes, remember to change your slug. And the way the slug works, I wrote great recipes. So I should write great, lowercase dash recipes, lowercase. That's a properly formatted slug. So I no longer have uncategorized. If I forget to change uncategorized, it'll be at least great recipes, which has some meaning. Quick note on the bottom right corner, deleting a category does not delete the posts in that category. Instead, posts that were only assigned to be deleted category are set to the category on category, or in our case, great recipes. So if you want to mass delete posts, you don't do it by deleting a category. You do it in a way we'll see a little later. And you then can convert categories to tags and vice versa. I hardly have any use for that. But this is categories. Any questions on this one? Yes? Isn't there a way to automatically turn um, posts that are in a specific category into a menu item? Yes, we'll see that once we start to work with menus, but it's just a simple check mark. We'll get to that soon. Let's go look at tags and tags. Very, very similar. You might almost say, like, what's the difference? But on a technical level, they do have a, a little bit of a difference. Think about it in terms, again, categories are like the large organizational units, the large concepts, and tags are the individual concepts per, per article. Let's say I'm writing uh, articles about cakes, cookies, 
and donuts. All three obviously conceptually are very different. So I've got a category of donuts, of cakes, and of cookies. But I could have chocolate donuts and chocolate cookies and chocolate cakes. All three of them share then the tag of chocolate. So in separate categories of what they are and then uh, in same tag of what they feature. So we won't really do anything here because again I usually find it easier to create categories first, write the posts, and then onto the post add the tags. I don't quite have an idea what possible tags I may use. Usually they come organically as I start to write and I see the tags that appear at that moment. Your mileage may vary, so maybe you would work well by creating tags and categories first and then writing articles. So we won't do anything here, it's the same as the other screen, but any questions on this screen? Yes? Do the uh, tag cloud plugins actually work off the tag or do they just... They work off the tags. They work off the tags usually. Some of, I should say, some of them work off the tags and some of them do work off the content of your articles, but usually I see the default ones, they work off of tags. Let's hover over all posts. I mean, let's, sorry, let's click on all posts. It's inside of the posts section. Click on all posts. And this, list, this lists all the posts you've written. There's the default Hello World one. There's the one we wrote. A few columns here. Notice as you hover over one of the posts, then you get also edit, quick edit, trash, and view it. This Hello World one, it doesn't really relate to anything we our site is about, so let's trash it. Hover over and just click Trash. If we had multiple articles we wanted to delete at once, we would have to select them all. And up on Bulk Actions, we would select Move to Trash and then Apply. So if you wanted to delete many of them at once, select them change the action to move to trash and apply. Don't delete our latest article, but that's how we would delete multiple uh, posts. And it would be the same for pages and products when we get to that, and categories. But let's say here under this, under this uh, article, don't click on it yet, but let's say I wanted to edit it. Well, I can just click edit and it goes back to editing. Yes, question? If you if it's not letting you delete it, that's okay for the moment. Uh, I'll I'll see it in detail in a moment, but it should be able to simply trash it. There might be some other setting that's getting in the way, but we don't need to quite worry about it at the moment. If I were to edit, it would just take me back to the editing screen. Nothing nothing big here, so don't worry about clicking on it yet. What I do want to show you though is quick edit. Because there's something interesting here under Quick Edit that is not obvious under Edit. If you look under Quick Edit, there's a bunch of things here. Allow comments. If you recall on day one, we talked about that we can, by default, anyone can write a comment on any of your posts. But by default, people can also write a comment on your About page and the Contact page and other weird stuff. So you can do this quick edit to a post or a page and you will see allow comment, yes or no. That's up to you. If you no longer want people to comment, you can turn it off. The comments are still saved in the system, they're just not viewable anymore if anyone had left a comment. If I just publish this post but I want no comments because it's too controversial, then I can turn off allow comments. I'm going to leave that alone, but notice it also lists tags. I can quick edit tags. I can quick edit categories. Allow pings. Don't worry about that. It's good. Just leave that. Status published, pending, review, draft. What are pings? Like I said, don't worry about it. It's good. It just means that uh, an another if if another uh, site if if you link your article to another site it'll let the art it'll let the other site know that you linked to them so they're good 
because that helps us with backlinks via SEO. Make this post sticky. We mentioned that before. We can do publish, draft, pending review. Uh, pending review really only makes sense if you if you've got different people helping you write your blog in that you're gonna look at it before it actually gets published so here let's say whoops I shouldn't have published that article there's no unpublish the closest thing is to set it back to draft if you set it back to draft and update it now it takes it away from public view it doesn't delete it it basically hides it it's set to draft that's the way basically to unpublish I guess also pending review. But published is it's public. What else? We can change the title here and the slug, the date of publication. Here's where we can set password protection. Set it to private. It's either or. expand to that area you're at. If you hover over uh, your article, you should see Quick Edit. Uh -huh. And then under Quick Edit, okay. it shows everything. Thank you. And so here we can see, uh, let's see, there's also another quick view to view it over here. If you change this view, it also displays a little bit more of your content. There's compact view, expanded view. And even with these two views, we can look at more things. WordPress has a lot of features, and many of them are deactivated because not everyone needs every feature, and the screen would be very cluttered. But let's show you what things WordPress is hiding from us. At the top right corner, we have help, and we have screen options. Just about every screen has screen options, because there's so many settings, a lot of them are hidden. Click on screen options. And in our case, in this screen, they're all on. Show the author column or not. Show the categories or not, and, and so forth. On a separate screen, we will see other things that might be useful to us. But here, these are these extra screen options. If you've got a lot of articles, instead of going next page, next page, next page, you can sh say, show me 30 at, at once. And that's just for yourself. That's, that's not on screen for the, your users. For your users, it's not uh, show 20 articles on my home screen. That's show me here in this screen 20 at a time. So this screen doesn't have very many extra options. They're all on anyway. Any, any questions before we go on here? Let's write another article so I can mention another useful thing. Click here. We've got three ways to do it. On the left, add new post. In the center, add new post. Or at the top, new post. There's always a way to do something quickly. I'm going to click add new post. Oh, uh, before, before that, uh, just stay where you are. But I deleted something, and it went to the trash. There's a trash here. It doesn't delete automatically. Just like my recycle bin or my trash can on my computer in case I want to bring it back. So anything that I have trashed will still be protected there. Anything that has been set to draft or private and such will have its own category. And everything that's published is published. If I want to bring something back from the trash can, I would hover over and restore. That's easy. But anyway, let's select Add New Post. And let's say I wanted to write an article here. This is a good SEO advice. If you want ideas for writing articles, one idea is to write a top five list, a top 10 list, top seven, top 12. Doesn't matter the number, but a list of top whatever, because that's small, digestible pieces of content. Top five 
healthy alternatives to sugar, let's say. Top 7 WordPress themes. Top 12 rental properties. Bottom 3 avoid, mistakes to avoid when refinancing. You know, whatever list of things. Those types of articles are very popular. You've probably read a variety of them, and you read that one, and you want to read another one, and another one, and another one. Uh, they're small pieces of information, easily digestible, and that also is a blog, and it can satisfy the 100 words. But let's see here, I wanted to write top five alternatives, no, healthy alternatives to sugar. And let's say what I want to do is write, you know, a, a, a top list and uh, a bunch of bullet points and get really detailed. Let's say I'm going to end up writing a 300-word post. By default, if we don't tell WordPress, it will put all those 300 words right on that home screen. And it'll be a lot to scroll through. What if someone doesn't care about this article? We're going to force them to scroll through 300 words. A better thing would be to do, that you see very often, is that you write a little blurb, a little preview, and then it says read more. And if they want to read more, then they can click to read more. If they don't care about that article, they'll move on. But they won't have a whole screen cluttered with something they don't want to read. So let's address that. Let's write a little enticing sentence or two, and then read more, and then the rest. So let's say whatever, starting here, nowadays... Everyone cares about their sugar intake. Intake. Here is our top five list of the best sugar alternatives. Press enter. That's what's going to display first for people. But the way to make it actually then have it a button that says read more is a button right here. To me, it looks like the, the little uh, uh, the road divider from a two-lane highway. But that's the read more button. It's supposed to be two pages, you know, page one and more. That icon right there, if you click that, it'll add a special code, insert read more tag. Click that one time and then press enter. And then you'll see that's what's going to show up for people on your home screen. And then a button that will say read more. Depending on the theme, it might say read more, continue reading, click here, depending on your theme. And then they'll click and they'll read the rest that will come up here. How do you undo that? You can always undo by hitting that undo button right there. If you don't see the undo button, it's because it's hidden inside of the toolbar toggle. Turn on that button, and then you'll see them too. We have undo, and we have redo. So we're not going to really spend time on actually writing this article, but let's just write some quick five things. Uh, we have these. Uh, we have numbered list. So I'm just going to select that, and right here, uh, what do we have? Stevia. Monk fruit. What else? Um, agave. Agave syrup. Is that powdered also or just syrup? Agave syrup. Turbinado sugar. You might have gotten the sense that I do have a hobby of cooking. I used to take my classes. Or a sweet tooth. <laughs> and number five. What's the fifth one? Anyone know any sugar alternatives? Maple syrup. Honey. Maple syrup, honey. Honey, yeah. It's a classic one. Now, we did say healthy, so. But never mind. Top five alternatives. Aspartame. That's not healthy. <laughs> so, um, okay, content. Fine. Uh, categories and tags. We'll do that quickly. We don't have to worry too much. I'm focusing on the on the more button. 
um, format, fine, don't worry about that. But category, uh, um, healthy recipes, sure. I'll put it under healthy recipes and category, um, just a tag of sugar. Go ahead and publish it. Visit site. And then we'll see the big difference in putting in that more button. Publish. I'll go back to visit site. What I should see then on my home page, top five healthy, first paragraph, continue reading. Not the rest. Did you put a tag in there first? I missed it. I just put sugar. Oh, okay. In my particular theme, it's showing recent posts here on the side also. But here on the home page, it's showing the latest one, and it's published April 11th. Tag of sugar. And if you click, what's also useful about these tags and categories is that if someone sees, for example, the sugar tag, they can click on it and it'll show them all of the posts that have used that tag. So that's great for people to find what they're looking for. That's great for the search engines to look at your site and analyze it and show it to people when someone searches. And categories is in there somewhere. There's going to be a link to... Let's say I click continue reading. And there it is. There's the rest of the article. Previous article. Did you did you click up on the name of your site and then visit site? All right. Let's check that. You you want to go to visit site and make sure you're on the home page. So I think uh, on the technical level, that's that's the those are the big ideas regarding posts. You want to think about categories and tags. You want to write findable content. You want to do it on a regular basis. Um, we'll talk about pages now. But any general questions about posts before moving on? Okay, let's go back to the dashboard. Let's hover over pages and notice the only thing we've got for pages is show me all the pages and add new. Let's click add new under pages. Be careful because obviously posts and pages they both have add new. You want to make sure you're under pages. And I I would looking at it now I kind of see that it's backwards. I would want I would think that the pin would be for pages and the sheets would be for posts because pages are the ones that are stuck. Pages are the ones that don't change that often, as we will see in a moment. And then here we can add more pages, more sheets to posts. So I think those are backwards, actually. Never really noticed that. But anyway, under pages, click Add New, and you'll see a screen very, very similar to the posts. It needs a title and content. But notice there's nothing on the right side that says about the format. There's no categories and there's no tags. There is page attributes, which is about creating parent and child relationships and an order of them. That's really not that useful, as we'll see later. And depending on your theme, you may have extra options here, such as template. Because when we choose a theme, that design, let's say the, the design of my theme that I chose was all blue. So a lot of blue colors in my design. But what if one page you want it to be yellow? Well, that one theme has everything set to blue. Unless that theme gave you templates for you to apply the yellow design to a certain page. This theme didn't. I don't see an extra box here that says template. If your theme allows that, you will see a box that says template. And that's for you to add a different design page by page. Screen by screen. 
This has set featured image also, but not too much to it. It's static content. Let's say we're going to create an About Us page. I'm going to make a note here. Recommended pages for SEO. You should have some About page. You should have some Contact page. And you should have a Blog page. Spam sites don't have a very good About Us page, if at all, or it may have fake content on that About Us page. So you, as a real site, want a real About Us page for the search engines to see you're legitimate. Same thing with contact pages. Spammers don't have a contact page. They create a, a quick fly-by-night uh, page, they take your money and they're gone. There's no way to then get in contact with them. So you're going to have a contact page. We'll talk about what to put in it in a moment. And then depending on the design of your site, you should have a blog page or you can keep your blogs on the home page like we have. But we'll see we will need a blog page if we're going to have a static home page. We'll see what that means soon. Let's say we're going to add our About Us page. And you can call this whatever you want. You can call it About Us, About the Company, About Me, All About Us. You can call this whatever you want. Let's say this bakery, we called it About Us. And then I'm going to click here to start editing. This company, we've got an About Us page. And the cool thing is that it automatically fills the permalink. The permalink, confusingly, the permalink might also be referred to as the slug, because that's, that's the address right there. The slug is just what, what the title is, lowercase and with dashes. So permalink, also known as slug, basically, it filled it in for us. Good. But it actually didn't fill it in how I wanted. It's becoming more and more common practice to have your About Us page simply called About. Uh, the search engines might look victor.com slash about, and if it doesn't exist, um, it may get confused. So I want to call this simply about, but I can do two things. For the user, on screen, they will see About Us. But for the search engine, I want it to see About. So that's why we can conceivably select here, Edit, on your permalink. Click Edit, and it will edit your slug, and I will call this simply About. People will see About Us, but the search engine will see About. This is up to you if you'd like to do that. I do recommend it. I do recommend crafting your addresses. Don't just take what don't just accept what it took up there because it might not be crafted as well as as it could be and I'm recommending for your about page call it about the company up on top here great but in the address simply about or I suppose I could do about dash victors dash bakery that's also pretty good that's specific it's got the keywords of the company and the keyword about but I would, I would keep that one short. And so then we get uh, an editing field here. I'm not really going to write anything meaningful here under About Us, but you know, I could write whatever I want here. I'm just going to put whatever. So some About Us information. It's in Latin, obviously. Now, this uh, screen here does... It, this screen is one of the ones that has hidden content, hidden options, that is. On the top right corner, click Screen Options. And it's showing page attributes, featured image, but none of those other ones. I don't know what those are, but let me turn them on. Custom fields, discussion, slug author, and what you should see is brand new little boxes appear. 
custom fields. This is really advanced. You hardly need to use this. Custom fields can be used to add extra metadata to a post that you can then use in your theme. It's really advanced. It's more like creating, uh, creating functionality via coding, usually. So that's, that one's usually hidden, and it's very advanced. You usually don't have to bother with it. So notice you can, you can either hide it again or, or collapse it if you click the triangle. So custom fields, don't worry, it's advanced. Discussion. Look at this. This is a place where I can turn this on or off. It's one of the places. I can still go back to the other screen. I don't want comments on people adding comments to the About Us screen. That doesn't make sense. I never see that. So in this case, I do not want to allow comments on the About page. That's back there also on Quick Edit, remember? And what was on Quick Edit was also that pingbacks. Again, don't worry about it. It's good to leave it on, so we'll leave it on. Here's another place to edit the slug, down here or at the top, either or. And finally, author. If you've got more than one writer of your blog, this might be useful. Let's say you have ghost writers. Let's say you've hired people to write for you. That's perfectly le legitimate. It's perfectly legitimate to hire people to write for your blog if they are writing original content and not stealing it from elsewhere and not reusing it from their other clients. That's fine. But if you're doing ghostwriting, you don't want other person's name on your blog. You want your name. You wrote it. And so here you would select that other person's name instead of yours or vice versa. So how would I change the name this, we can't change it here until we start to add more users. When we mentioned users last time, we added users and so forth, but that's how we can change it. We need users first. And what else? So, um, uh, what else? Uh -huh. Is it possible to allow comments? Yes, we did talk about that last time. Under the settings, reading, there is the option, not reading, uh, discussion. Under settings, discussion, there is a button right there that I did recommend last time to turn it on. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. This option here will apply to everything. No matter if it's a post or a page. Um, then we've got, I guess, also up on screen options one column, two column, if you'd like. Enable full height editor, distraction free. That's just simply that uh, you can expand your screen so that all the other buttons go away just to focus on your writing. But you can turn those different options on and off. Doesn't matter. Let's click Publish and Visit Site. So I created a brand new page called About Us. I published it. Just like when we created a brand new post and we published it. When I clicked, when I created the post and published it, it showed up right on the home page. I created a page, and I don't see it anywhere. Do you? This is one of the big stumbling blocks for beginners. By default, the pages you create may not be visible until you specify them to be visible in a menu. There's technically no menu anywhere to navigate around. We created a page. But there's no menu to get to it. So this goes hand in hand with talking about uh, menus. We created a page. We can't get to it. Actually, we can. Didn't we call it about whatever our address is slash about? Oops. Never mind. It is there. It is there, trust me, but we can't, we can't get to it. We created a page, but we can't get to it because it's not in a menu. Let's create a menu. We need menus to be able to access 
our pages. A post by default may automatically show up on the home screen, but not pages. Let's go back to dashboard. Hover over appearance. We have a lot of settings here, but we have at the moment the one we care about, menus. So let's hover over appearance and click on menus. This screen is a little confusing for a beginner. Let me break it down in general. We can have multiple menus. We can create menus and we can edit them here. Let's say we've got two menus, you know, winter sales, summer sales. So we can have different menus that will all be listed here. We haven't created any of them, so it's asking us to create one. The actual structure of the menu will be here on the right side. The home button, the about button, whatever. The structure will be here. And what we can put into the menu will be selectable here. Put this page or put that custom link or that category into that menu. We don't have any menu yet, so we need to create a menu. Let's call this Main Menu and click Save or click Create Menu. We've only got one menu, so we don't have very many others to manage. Just this one. Here it is. There's nothing in it. Here's how we can populate it. But before we do that, so there's a lot of things that throw off beginners about, about menus in WordPress. Where are they? How do I create them? And so forth. But here's another big one. I created the menu. I saved it. I populated it with pages, but it still doesn't show up because of this. Theme location. It's not actually then used anywhere. This menu is not activated anywhere in the design. And this particular theme has a section to put a menu called the primary menu, and a section where we could put a menu called social links menu. Depending on your theme, you may have one or four or two, it depends on your theme. And that's the big confusing thing. Beginners start with WordPress, they choose a theme, it looks amazing, but then they don't see any of their menu buttons because you never turned on where would you like to place this menu in the theme's location. Our main menu, we want it in the primary menu. I don't know what it actually looks like. I don't know where that's actually going to be. I will see that after I save it and such. That's the big, that's usually the big stumbling block. Where's my menu items? Well, you didn't set a menu theme. The theme location, I mean. And, uh, you'll still see nothing because there's no structure in the menu. There's, there's nothing in the menu yet. I'm going to put stuff into it. We can do pages, custom links, and categories. Let's look at here, view all. I want a home button in my menu, and I want an about us button. So select home and about us. Notice home is under view all. If you don't see it, you're under most recent. Make sure you're under view all and then we want a home button and about us button. Click add to menu. We don't want the sample page, it's, it's just a sample. So now our menu structure We'll have home, and we'll have about us, and it says drag each item into the order you prefer. Click the arrow on the right of the item to reveal additional config options. We'll look at that later. Just go ahead and save menu and visit site. Uh, they both do the same, so whichever is closest to you, to your mouse. Go ahead and click save menu and then visit site. Now do you see what we were missing? Mm -hmm. On the left we have home button and it's bold because we're on home and now we've got about us. So if you click about us it's bold and we're on about us.
Let's go back to the menu editing screen. And I forgot where it is, so you guys tell me. How do I go back to the menu editor? What appearance? That's right. Back to the dashboard first, and then appearance. And menus. Let's go back to the let's go back to the menus under appearance in the dashboard. And here's this check mark of your question from, from earlier. Uh, but by default, if I next add a contact page, it will not add itself to my menu. If I add a uh, Shop Now page, it will not add itself to the menu unless we have Auto Add Pages. Automatically add new top level pages to this menu. Now that's good and bad. And personally, I don't turn that on. Uh, it is more work. I have to remember that when I do this for a client, we created all of these pages, and I have to remember to go back to the screen and add them to the menu. And you say, well, why do you want to give yourself more work? Because when we do things advanced in an advanced way, sometimes at a certain point we're creating landing pages. Landing pages, let me make a note here. Landing pages are, are pages, screens, a user can only get to via a special link. Think about it like this. You subscribe to an email newsletter, and then it's going to say, click here for this week's sale. You can only get to that link via that email. You can't get to that link from the home page. You can't get to that link from the menu on the home page. The only way to get to that special sales link is if, is if you're subscribed to the newsletter. So landing pages basically are hidden pages, pages that are not accessible except for a special link. So if I were to activate the button right here, every time I create a brand new page added to my menu, that defeats the purpose. And at a certain level, well, we're done building our main pages. I don't need to add every new page to the menu. I've got the six links of my site set. But I don't need to add more pages to the menu. But I do need to create landing pages. And there's no button anywhere that says create landing page. It's just a page that is not linked in the menu that you get to by a special link, such as an email or a tweet. What if I'm on Twitter and I've got a 1,000 followers on Twitter? I tweet. Sale this Saturday, click here. And people will only get to that link if they know about us on Twitter or follow us on Twitter. So, landing pages are screens usually you can only get to via a special link, aka don't put them in your menu. Those can, be, those can be added as well. So you have to decide this. Now, you may be forgetful. That's fine. I, I forgot to add my items to my menu. This might be useful for me in the beginning as I'm setting up my site. I turn that on, and in a moment when we'll create the, the contact page, it'll automatically add it for us. Great. I won't forget. But again, in my company, when we do this for, for clients, you know, I set up the site and such, and then I have someone else on the team, maybe Patricia, create a landing page because this week we're running an ad from Facebook to get traffic. Well, we're obviously not going to put that page on the main menu. We need to get traffic through Facebook. So it's a landing page. It's hidden. It's not on the main menu. We can add pages to the menu. I don't see posts unless you turn on the screen option. If you want to put a post into your menu, you can, but it's on, not on by default because it's not that common to do, actually. But if you want to, it's hidden under screen options. Let me select posts. 
maybe there's a post that you wrote in January that you really need to show up always in your menu. Because remember, posts will get pushed down every time there's a new one. So if you turn on posts, now you have a brand new section here. I'm going to add my top five healthy alternatives to sugar to the menu. And what else? Tags. I suppose we can add tags to the menu. Formats. That's another way to organize things. Remember, if we are using formats and we put items into different formats, it should let us add them there. Description. Let's say we'll turn them all on just to oh, see what they're. What's that? I didn't get the pages in. You didn't get pages. Pages is default. You mean posts? Pages is my personal so we'll pages and posts and posts. Go ahead and turn them all on just to see what we get. Now the show advanced menu properties, you turn those on, but you don't see what what, what happened. Those advanced ones are, are here, for example. Um, well, let me show you in the example this way. Let's say I turned all of these on. And I want, and I've got a home. I've got a couple of pages, and a post. I want to add a link over to my Amazon store. Let's say that would be a custom link. Open custom link section, and what you do is you fill out the address, the URL, and then you put in the text that will appear on the menu. And let's say this is my Amazon link, amazon.com slash whatever. And then the menu is buy now on Amazon. That's what it's going to say on the actual link. It can say anything you want. But this needs a link and, and some text. Add it to the menu. And I've got home about us, top five healthy, by now. We can do several advanced things. One of them is organization. What if I want by now to be visible before the top healthy ones? I can simply drag it. But I have to be careful because if I drag and drop it like this, the Amazon link is now a sub-menu item of About Us. It's a drop-down link. They will see Home, About Us, Top 5. And then if you click About Us, it'll open up to show Buy Now. I want to make sure that the Buy Now is on the same level on the left as the other ones. So if you're dragging it and it's becoming indented below something, you don't you you might not want that. That means that by now will be hidden inside of a different menu item. It's a sub item. Sometimes it's finicky. You think, well why isn't it going to the left? You just have to kind of find the spot and then it will move it to the left. Move that dotted line so that it's on the left. You have to create it. So let's say I'm going to drag it around however I want like that. Click Save. Visit Site. There's my menu. Home, Buy, About, Top 5.
can jump quickly back to the menu editor by hovering your mouse over the name of your site and then going to menus. And so we can add pages, custom links, which, which would be like Amazon and such, and categories and everything. But um, if you saw, if, if you do click on that Amazon link, it'll go over to Amazon. But that'll be the problem we talked about previously about external links. If I want to click, if I click on a link and it goes off to some external site, I want the link to open in its own window. We can do that from the menu too. If you click the triangle next to any one of these links, you'll get more options. If you want to fix the address, there's the URL again. If you want to change the text that appears, there's the spot. Title is just more text to display. When, you're, when someone puts their mouse over the link, it could display a little pop-up text. So more text. And here it is, open link in a new window. That was hidden. That wasn't there until we turned on screen options link target. If I turn off link target, it doesn't say open in a new window. It's under link target. And obviously, as I said previously, you only want to add new link, open link in a new tab, to external uh, links. From your own page to your own pages, maybe not. You'll, you'll open too many pages. CSS class, don't worry about that. That's advanced if you want to write some CSS code to style it. But what I often find is when you use uh, premium themes, let's say you, you find a theme that has some great design and great icons. Oftentimes, the premium themes let you select your icon in this box here. You'll have to read the manual, and it'll say if you want the email icon instead of the home icon, go to your CSS class and add the code. And I'll say, I don't see that box. Well, because that box by default is turned off, as we saw. Link relationship, honestly, I don't have any use for that. I barely know how it works, so I don't have much to say about it. And then description will be displayed in the menu if the current theme supports it. That sometimes is useful, again, depending on the theme, depending how it's programmed. If you write something here, it might do extra things. And here's another way to organize it. Instead of dragging and dropping, you can use move up, move it up one, move it down one, put it under home, move it to the top. And here's how to delete it from the menu if you no longer want it. Click Save Menu. And if we visit site, now when I click on Buy Now on Amazon, it opens in a new tab, a new window. Someone visits the Amazon link, they're done with Amazon, they close Amazon, they're still on my site. Where did you get the Amazon? You have to type it under custom link. It's just Amazon.com. All right, let's take one more break, and when we come back, we'll we'll talk about uh, saving our projects so that we don't have to, so that we don't have to do this again next week. I don't want to start all over again next week. We've done a pretty good amount of work. I don't want to start over. So we'll take a break. It's 3.07. We'll be back at 3.17. And when we come back, we'll talk about 
backing up our site to take it with us.